Hi, I'm Eric Lenask. We're here in New York at this year's Telecom Exchange event. I'm talking with Atlantic ACM's Fedor Smith. Fedor, thanks for joining me. Thank you, Eric. It's a pleasure. Who is Atlantic ACM? Get me started with that. What do you do? Atlantic ACM is a Boston-based uh, research and consulting firm. We basically act as a trusted advisor to carriers, co-providers, hardware manufacturers, uh, as well as the investors that back those companies or buy those companies to provide informed information about the marketplace, make uh, accurate estimates or calculations of opportunities, those sorts of things. Just tell me about, talk to me a little bit about uh, some of the major trends that, that, are, that you're consulting on right now that are impacting your clients. Absolutely. Well, on the acquisition side, obviously, the fiber market is incredible. Um, there's very few things out there left to buy and lots of enthusiasm. And I think it's an interesting blend of people being very uh, exuberant about the real value of those assets and at the same time being cautious based on our, our previous irrational exuberance over fiber development um, not that long ago. But the reality is, especially Hunter Newby is here and we'll preach this all day long, uh, wireless is, is going to be the future, but it's all supported by those fiber networks and uh, as is all the enterprise work, et cetera. So making sure people are building what is needed, where it's needed, and maintaining the value of those assets is really a pivotal element in the marketplace right now. So you, you mentioned uh, you know, the fiber supporting the build-out and the growth of wireless. Talk a little more about the relationship between the wireline, and the fiber, and, and the wireless operators. Absolutely. Uh, I, I think it goes without saying uh, that that relationship is becoming a tighter bond. Um, the wireless challenges, which are most aptly exemplified here in New York, where they first came to the reality that you can't have a couple of T1s at a tower, um, are driving, have driven a massive overhaul of that whole system. Um, we see very different tactics from various wireless players. Obviously, Verizon is the leader in the dark fiber game. Others have looked at it, talked about it, done some of it, but have not been as committed to it. Um, but in large, the need for backhaul uh, is a huge factor in uh, keep being competitive in wireless right now. That and, and network coverage are going to be the determinants of who wins and who loses. And it's very challenging with price compression the way it is. Uh, you can't charge more for good coverage, but people will not stay with you if you don't have it. Uh, so that relationship between wire, wireline backhaul uh, and wireless coverage and support is going to be increasingly uh, important in the marketplace, and they're going to have to find great ways and very efficient ways to keep customers happy with the increasing demand. And I would imagine that relationship is, is actually only going to continue to grow in importance as mobile app applications continue, continue to be developed, as more and more data, uh, whether it's from those mobile devices or cell phones or wearable technologies, just more and more data has to be collected and backhauled uh, uh, to the network. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and we've seen this before. I mean, the, the IoT uh, M to M element is growing rapidly, but it really hasn't become a, a huge part, especially in terms of uh, bandwidth, but just in general of the marketplace, the way it, it is forecasted to and will uh, become. There's going to be an inflection point somewhere in the future. Uh, I guess the iPhone was the mobile data inflection point for uh, just standard mobile data practices, where suddenly it's usable, it's secure, it's user friendly people can afford it, um, and it has real applications that people want. Uh, when we hit that, it is going to be a real shift, and one of the factors, bandwidth-wise, most of those, many of those uh, M-to-M functions are not hugely bandwidth-heavy, but they are often latency-sensitive, not to mention there is a limit to the number of devices a given tower or radio can support, so if every individual suddenly has nine devices on them or uh, individually connected to the network, that complicates things as well. Um, so I think that that is going to be something carriers have to plan for accordingly and work together really to find strategic ways with both the software developers, the hardware manufacturers, obviously the backhaul side to create an environment where those devices can be supported and keep customers happy. Um, and that challenge is real because I'm, everyone who's been here today has dropped a call or two already probably. So, Unfortunately, that's probably true. Looking ahead a little bit, how are some of these uh, challenges going to play out, uh, you know, looking forward? And are there additional or new challenges that you foresee building? Uh, there definitely are. I mean, the reality is video is the biggest bandwidth issue, both wireline and wireless. Um, the f people's willingness to watch video on their phone is increasing. Obviously, the cellular companies have been smart enough to or have been fortunate enough 
to enact a pay-as-you-play type of model. There is unlimited service, but as we see from the AT&T lawsuit, it's not really unlimited. Um, and and it, nor does it say it is. There's always the fine print. So they've been able to keep users in check in terms of their consumption. The wireline side, the net neutrality debate, that's not the case. There's lots of people consuming lots of content. Uh, that's going to increase both in terms of the number of cut the cord cutters who are using OTT video, as well as obviously 4K TV is going to increase the stream size, uh, both for whatever device it might be, households out in the, the great wide world. There's going to be massive challenges in delivering that content in an efficient way. Um, and it's not just a network opportunity, you know, obviously. It's the closer you can get that content to the edge, the more efficiently you can get it to the customer, uh, and just managing uh, devices and networks to, to avoid the customer having an experience that uh, basically makes them want to turn over to another carrier. Excellent. Fedor, thank you so much for joining me here today. Good luck. Enjoy the rest of the show. Thank you. Appreciate it. Really a pleasure.